I had to fight for them now because I. Good for you. That's so great. Good afternoon, and um, welcome to this. Welcome to the sixth annual Tucson Festival of Books. My name's Pam Sutherland. Uh, we'd like to thank the city of Tucson for sponsoring this venue. We also thank Rob and Judy Wilson for sponsoring this session. The presentation will last one hour, including questions and answers, so please hold your questions to the end. At the conclusion of the session, the authors will go to a signing area to meet you and autograph their books. Out of respect for the authors and your fellow audience members, please turn off your cell phones now. So everybody take a second, look at your cell phone, is it off? Please. So we have two wonderful Boston Globe columnists here, uh, Kevin Cullen and Shelley Murphy. They are currently columnists for the Boston Globe and Kevin is working on his column for Tuesday's paper. Um, as you know, they're the authors of this book on Whitey Bulger. Um, Kevin has been a reporter for the Globe since 1985. In 2003, he was part of the investigative team that won the Pulitzer for coverage of the Catholic Church sex abuse scandal. Uh, he went to the uh, Trinity University in Dublin. Uh, he is from Malden, and he covered the conflict in Northern Ireland. Uh, Shelley Murphy is also a reporter at the Boston Globe, has worked there for 21 years. She's covered organized crime for much of that time. Um, she was previously at the Boston Herald. Uh, she's won a Polk Award, and she's from Dorchester. And welcome to Tucson, you two. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So just, um, the book actually was one of the finalists for the National Book Critics Circle Award, so congratulations on that. And can you uh, tell us why you started following this story and give us a little bit of background on it? Uh, well, first of all, Shelley and I would like to thank everybody uh, associated with the book festival for having us here. We've been here for 22 hours and have already fallen in love with this town. And it must be fate, that, but uh, Whitey is about 10 or 11 miles from here right now in your penitentiary. <laughs> And uh, we asked him if he'd like to attend, but uh, when the phone didn't ring, we knew it was him. Um, Shelley and I have covered, uh, first of all, like I said, Shelley grew up in Dorchester, very close to the South Boston line. She went to South Boston High. My entire maternal side is from South Boston. So you, we would have grown up knowing, learning about Whitey Bulger by osmosis. Everybody where we grew up, where we were from, knew he was a, a hoodlum, a gangster, and a very dangerous guy. And at approximately the same time, for different newspapers, we were really paying attention to him and were writing about him. And, um, and obviously, the, what really made Whitey just a remarkable story is, um, while he was the most powerful gangster in Boston, his brother Bill was the most powerful politician in Massachusetts. He was the long-serving longest serving president of the, of the state senate. He had an incredible patronage network in which he got people's jobs, he got people jobs, and with that came an awful lot of um, uh, support and for him both politically, but also sort of nobody said anything about Whitey. And uh, I was part of the team in 88 that did a sort of um, seminal series on the brothers, call it, you know, the, the brothers bulge of the mystique explaining how Whitey became the most powerful gangster in Boston while his brother was the most powerful politician. But at the heart of the story uh, was our exposing him in 1988 as an informant for the FBI. That's why Whitey was protected. It wasn't just because of his brother, but it certainly played a, his brother's role as a politician played a giant part of that. Uh, but when Shelley, there have been other books written about Whitey Bulger, in some respects maybe too many. Uh, many of them were written by criminal colleagues of his who basically lie. I could, we call the genre of literature lies guy lit because uh, these guys embellish how t tough and big they are and they also minimize the amount of serious bad crime they do. Uh, so we, but as we sat down to map, map it out, we said that, you know, we didn't want, it has been called true crime, but um, we really sat down to make this a social history and to explain that a creature like Whitey Bulger could only exist in a certain time and place. Um, and so, and, 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 and very peculiar to Boston, we don't really believe that Whitey Bulger could have existed in New York or Philadelphia or Chicago or Tucson or LA because of the, of the way that the, the ethnic dynamics of Boston where the, the, the Irish were both in control of uh, politics, uh, law enforcement, 
business. The Irish really ran the town, and um, the, the, the influence of the Italian mafia was such that you could, the FBI could create a national policy to go after the uh, mafia and use Whitey and other criminals from, from an Irish background and say that they were being used to help get the mafia. That didn't only happen in Boston. But as we tried to establish, uh, you know, this is a story with great sweep. It, it begins with uh, Whitey Bulger only came from South Boston because FDR created uh, public housing as part of the New Deal. And one of the young congressmen who was running around the country selling the New Deal for FDR was a guy named John McCormick, who was the representative of the congressman from South Boston. And part of that deal was the first housing project in New England went into South Boston and Whitey and his family moved in. We kind of chart that whole thing. We chart the, sort of the ethnic mix, the way it played out. And then also, I would say that, that there's, the story has different layers, but one of them is this sort of overweening, overwrought sense of loyalty. Because in South Boston, the, there was an enormous um, importance placed on loyalty to your family, to your friends, to your neighbors, and to your neighborhood. And so when, an FBI, when a guy that became an FBI agent named John Conley was able to get into a position to protect Whitey Bulger, he did it for two reasons. He did it because in, if you're an FBI agent, you're, you're, all your raises, all your, you know, your prestige, your status within the Bureau is based on creating informants. And Whitey Bulger was seen as a high, you know, a, a, a very high level organized crime figure, a top echelon informant. But there was an ulterior motive there by Conley. He wanted to protect the Bulger family that was very, he was very close to, and Billy Bulger would have been one of his mentors helping him become an FBI agent. So a lot of it was, it's, it's this, and, and you know, I think you all probably know that Martin Scorsese did a film, The Departed, which is loosely based, and very, very loosely based on the Whitey character, because uh, Whitey would never get as fat as Jack Nicholson. He's just <laughs> way too vain. Um, but it, it, the, the whole story is the, the, about sort of the, what, how this could only happen in a place like Boston. And Shelley, you'd been covering organized crime. I know you had been uh, working in Providence with the very famous mayor there, who um, not only was elected as a criminal, but then served jail time and then got reelected. He's not a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> so so you're familiar with these me. kinds he of guys. He friended me on Facebook, actually. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> I actually had, have covered organized crime in, in, um, going back to the mid-80s, and um, we had the uh, distinction in, um, in Boston. It was the first, sort of a, uh, the first time ever that the FBI tape-recorded a mafia induction ceremony where uh, mobsters from around New England gathered at this home um, in Medford just outside Boston, and they burned holy cards and pricked their trigger fingers and vowed to kill anybody, you know, for the family. And um, the interesting thing is, you know, it's, it's as this case, you know, they played those tapes, you know, in court. We got to hear them. Um, but that, this was like one of the big major coups of the FBI in Boston. And one of the agents who had some of the informants who allowed them, you know, told them where this bugging ceremony would be was John Connolly. And so as the story unfolds, we find out that, you know, he is using Whitey Bulger and his partner, Steve Flemmy, another um, gangster from Boston, as informants against the mafia. And uh, so we get to see sort of how these cases that made heroes of the FBI, you know, in the late 80s, early 90s, and really decimated the mafia in New England, um, you know, it, it comes full sweep. And now their relationship with Whitey has sort of overshadowed all of those successes um, that they had, you know, in bringing down the mafia. Um, so it's been an interesting turn of events. And as Kevin said, the thing about Boston is, you know, the FBI had a national policy to target uh, La Cosa Nostra, the mafia, and, and it may have made sense in some parts of the country, um, but in Boston, uh, where, you know, Whitey's gang was just as powerful, if not more so, uh, it didn't really make much sense to use the head of that gang to target the Italians. And so there's, it's been a... It's, I'm now getting Garfield cards from ma mafia bosses from prison saying, what happened? <laughs> well, and, and the process of, um, of, of uh, reporting on and, and discovering this story must have had many, many, oh my goodness, moments where you just completely freaked out with the different connections that were being drawn. Can you talk about a little bit of that? Father Dryden, when you found that in the, 
from the records and recalled them in Boston? Well, yeah, I mean, um, one of the fascinating things about Whitey, I mean, he's not a, you know, the, he's a fascinating character. He has a very rich history. Some of you may know him as one of the FBI's 10 most wanted for years. He was on the uh, 10 most wanted list, right?